addition polymers that we talked about in the last video uh, tend to be non-biodegradable and the reason for that is is because they are man-made and they haven't been around for very long. These polymers are probably no more than 100 years old and therefore when you throw these things away the bacteria that would normally decompose things don't have the knowledge, they don't have the enzymes to be able to break the carbon-carbon bonds. What we're going to look at in this video are the condensation polymers. Now, condensation polymers have links which are more natural. We'll be dealing with carbohydrates and proteins very shortly, and those are the sort of links you find in condensation polymers. Now, they've been around forever because they're natural. They're present in living things. So the bacteria have had plenty of time to develop enzymes which can break down those bonds. So condensation polymers tend to be biodegradable. There are two types of condensation polymer that you need to be aware of. The first one we're going to look at are the polyesters. Now, as the name would suggest, the link that's between the monomers here is an ester link. So if I take a carboxylic acid, let's put a CO. OH there. And if I take an alcohol, let's draw that the other way around, like so, then what we can do to form the ester link is to eliminate water. And when we do this, the alcohol, you don't have to know this, but the alcohol loses the H and the carboxylic acid loses the OH. So that means we create this link C, C, O, O, C, C. Now this is your ester link. L water is eliminated as that happens. So this is a, what type of reaction? Correct, this is a condensation reaction. And if there was only one carboxylic acid group and one alcohol group, then it would stop there. So if you want to form a polyester, then you're going to have to have an alcohol group on either end and a carboxylic acid group on either end, like so. And now this can form another ester this way, this can form another ester that way, and now this can keep going and you can create a polyester. Probably um, the most common example I can give you would be a terolene, which is used for clothing. Um, polyethylene terephthalate is another one, and that's used in our, our plastic drink bottles, the ones that you see through. So the common bottles for water, they are PET, polyethylene terephthalate. All right, both of those are condensation polymers. Now, the other type of condensation polymer, which is every bit as important, is the polyamide. So, poly amide. Again, a carboxylic acid is needed. And incidentally, I'm putting in one more carbon here, but clearly you can put as many bits in between the two carboxylic acid groups as you like. Okay, this would just be one form of a polymer. Uh, the, the amine now has to be present for this one, NH2, C, C, NH2. Now I'm not showing all the hydrogens because I'm sure you can put those in for yourself. I'm showing you the functional groups that need to be present in order for a polyamide to form. Now just like we had in the polyester, the carboxylic acid again loses the OH and the amine loses one of its hydrogens. So again, another condensation reaction where we lose water. And this now would become C-O-N-H, C, C, and so on. Okay, so the same would happen here, the same would happen there. Water would be eliminated and a condensation reaction would take place. Now this is an amide linkage and therefore when you repeat that over and over again, 
you make a polyamide. Classic example would be nylon, which again is used in clothing and electrical uh, points and stuff like that. Um, another one would be uh, Kevlar, which is used in bulletproof vests that shows how strong these bonds are. Um, and there's, there's lots of other examples. But again, as long as you just know one or two, then that would be all you need to do.